Happy Wednesday. We're in the book of Hosea. He is one of the minor prophets, not called minor because he's uh, less important than the major prophets, called minor because the books are shorter. Uh, written 200 years after uh, Solomon's death and the division of Israel into North Israel and South Judah. Uh, Judah is, the North is, get, gets taken away by the Assyrians. We don't hear from them again. The South is going to be pulled into exile. They'll spend 70 years in exile. A number of books written about that. Um, and then they will come back from exile. We get like the book of Nehemiah. And then there's a post-exile period, book of Esther. We got, we've got some of all this stuff charted. We are uh, before the exile, but Hosea is, um, is trying to get our attention. Last week, he, uh, last Thursday, we looked at the idea that uh, we are the faithless ones. Uh, on Monday, the focus was on um, the unthinkable nature of God's love. And then yesterday, uh, how great God's love is. So today, I want to talk about the concept of a ransom because it is on display here in the book of Hosea. So Hosea will have to buy uh, Gomer back. He will have to pay uh, for her in order for her to get her freedom. And they had been married. There's a sense in which they belong together. But then uh, she has sold herself to others. And now he has to ransom her back. So this is a, this is a big theological concept. And uh, it's worth just thinking of, about a couple points here. First of all, um, there are some people that say, Look, why doesn't, um, why doesn't God just forgive? Um, like, why does there have to be this punishment for sin? Uh, sometimes I just forgive people. Why can't God just forgive? Okay, so, so first of all, when forgiveness happens, uh, somebody always pays, right? So uh, the illustration that I heard that I've told before, if you invite me over to your house, I show up at your house, uh, and I break something, I break a lamp. Um, you are going to say, I'm certainly, oh, um, don't worry, that's, a, that's an old thing. And I'm going to say, no, 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 I, I want to pay for your lamp. I broke your lamp. I'm going to get you a new lamp. And you're like, no, 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 it, it, you know, it, it's bad, it's old, no, you don't have to worry about it, we're going to throw it out anyway. Okay, that may or may not be true. But the point is, uh, you're either going to have to buy a new lamp or I'm going to buy a new lamp. Somebody has to pay for the lamp. I mean, if you needed the lamp, somebody has to pay for the lamp. And there's a sense in which uh, you can't just dismiss things. Somebody has to own some of this. And, and if you have a judge, and Chicago is sort of famously um, famous for corrupt judges, if you have a judge that lets somebody off who's guilty, nobody says, oh, that's a nice judge. You know, he's, he's part of the mob. He's crooked, right? We need Operation Greylord again. Uh, we, need, we need to root out these, these crooked judges. You can't just dismiss this stuff. He's guilty of murder, he's guilty of rape, he's guilty of uh, embezzlement, whatever. He has to pay. Somebody has to pay. So what we get with the gospel is Jesus and the Father, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working in community to maintain perfect holiness and justice and to demonstrate perfect love. It can't be done outside of the Trinity, right? You could have a God that is perfectly holy or you could have a God that's perfectly loving but what we've got is a God that says, okay, I'm going to be perfectly holy. Somebody has to pay, but I'm going to pay, <laughs> right? I am going to met out the full punishment for this sin. I'm just going to bear it myself. And so that's what we get in the gospel. We get, uh, we get the righteousness of God the Father, right, condemning sin. But we get uh, Jesus showing up and paying that debt. Now, more complicated than that because the Father was in the Son on the cross. I, I, I don't want to don't want to bifurcate the Trinity too much here. But the point is, in the Trinity we have the ransom being paid for us. So in this Old Testament book we have a foreshadowing of Jesus paying our moral debt. He paid my debt. He offers to pay your debt. It's on display when uh, Hosea um, buys back. Gomer. Have a good day.